you wowie. Back in October, I made a video about the upcoming Deal or No Deal spinoff, Deal or No Deal Island. What Deal or No Deal Island is about is that it's basically the gameplay of Deal or No Deal merged with the long-running CBS reality TV series, Survivor. In that video, I was rather critical of the idea because I couldn't imagine how Deal or No Deal could have Survivor-like elements incorporated into its gameplay, and just seemed like a half-assed effort from NBC to try to win over the Survivor audience. When I first heard about this show, I immediately thought that this was some kind of joke. Like, there's no way a TV executive would be dumb enough to even greenlight a concept like this in the first place. After seeing that this is not a joke, I'm not into some kind of fever dream and some executive at NBC actually greenlit this. This just made me wonder what the boardroom meeting was like when this show was being pitched. How on earth did the idea of merging Deal or No Deal with Survivor even come into fruition? Did someone really just take a good look at the original Deal or No Deal and thought, you know what this show needs? a survival aspect. Why NBC would want to win over the Survivor audience is because despite the drop in quality in recent years, it's still one of the most popular shows on television today. When making that video, I was fairly confident that the show was destined to be a flop. As for how I think the show is going to perform, I think the show is going to pull in a lot of viewers in the first few episodes, and then take a nosedive in ratings immediately after. I believe this to be the scenario because much like me, most other people will remember the show and be curious as to how the survival aspect would affect core deal or no deal gameplay, then realize that this is a really dumb idea and rightfully tune out after that. The only instance where I could see the show being consistent in its ratings is if the ratings itself were atrocious to begin with and stayed shitty throughout the entire run. I cannot picture a single outcome where the show is successful enough and ends up getting renewed past season 2, let alone getting renewed at all. But after seeing the trailer and a sneak peek of the show, let's just say that NBC really made me eat those words. In fact, after seeing the sneak peek for Deal or No Deal Island, I can safely say that I'm more excited for this than the newer Survivor season. After watching the sneak peek, which I'll leave a link to in the description, I thought the sneak peek did an amazing job at winning me over. The sneak peek starts with the 13 players traveling in jeeps to meet the host, Joe Manganiello, much like the marooning from Survivor. In the jeep ride, we get to know some of the contestants, such as the nerdy looking Aaron and the 63 year old Kim. We also get to hear from popular Survivor castaway Boston Rob and former Deal or No Deal model Claudia Jordan, who's trying to keep her past job as a Deal or No Deal model hidden. After the players meet Joe, a helicopter comes along and drops a bunch of cases in the wilderness for the players to receive. We also get more information on how eliminations work, since Joe mentions that the player who brings the highest valued cases wins, while the two players with the lowest values will be up for elimination against the banker. Joe also mentions that there are two red cases, with one containing a low value and another containing a steal, and Joe says that the banker's first test is asking who's the biggest gambler. After Joe tells the players to run to get the cases, they encounter a mud spa where the cases are being held. After all players retrieve a case, the banker calls Joe and tells the player that they will be offered $10,000 for anyone who goes back and gets a red case. While two contestants go back in the mud, the others are standing back and talking strategy about their decisions to get the red case. We also get insight on our first villains for the show. After one player gets the red case, it was revealed to be a steal. The player with the steal then tries to negotiate with the others by saying, if you have the million dollar case, I will not put you up for elimination. And from there, the sneak peek ends. I personally loved the sneak peek. Why I loved it is because despite the show not being Survivor, it had a very classic Survivor-like feel that is virtually non-existent in the newer seasons. For starters, I like that one of the players admits to being a villain in the sneak peek. It just feels so refreshing to see a legitimate villain on these kinds of shows again, since Survivor decided to shy away from casting villains like a bunch of sissies. I also got really attached to the cast from the 20 minutes I took to know them. I'm not going to give away too much spoilers, but I really liked Aaron's story about wanting to help his dad who was recently diagnosed with Parkinson's. I also felt sympathetic for Kim as she was recently let go from her job despite nearing retirement age. I also got to see some strategy from Dawson about how to navigate the mud pit. And let's not forget Boston Rob and former Deal or No Deal model Claudia Jordan. 
This is the type of casting that feels missing from the newer seasons. Since CBS is so dedicated to just casting super fans with taking minimal consideration in regards to their personality and life background. Which in turn results in those casts feeling the exact same season after season. Such as the most recent season, Survivor 45, where we had two nerdy men with similar names, with one being called Brandon and the other being called Brando. Or how we have a lawyer who plays D&D in his spare time even though we literally had a law school student who plays D&D in the season prior. The only difference being the one from 45 has a Boston accent. Julie, you have, you have a clean mouth right now. Julie. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Let's go! Alright, one person down. You have one left to choose. Anyone feeling especially hungry? Always. Uh, Bruce. I should also mention that there were two other lawyers in that season as well. While I don't have a problem with casting some super fans, but if everyone is a super fan, then no one is. I also like how the classic deal or no deal gameplay is incorporated into the eliminations. After each competition, the briefcases selected in the challenge will be used in tonight's game of deal or no deal. The player who scores the biggest prize in the challenge will have immunity and select a fellow competitor to enter the temple. The chosen competitor will then play deal or no deal. If they make a bad deal, they'll be sent home. If fortune rules in their favor, then they get to decide who will be eliminated that night. It adds much higher stakes to the classic deal or no deal gameplay. Lastly, more than 100 metal briefcases are scattered. Each case is worth a different amount, but the total value of the cases is worth over $200 million. Sure, not all of those $200 million are going to be handed out to the players, but the fact that it can be just shows how much NBC is willing to pour into this show, especially compared to how CBS is being cheap with this show. Since they're still filming in Fiji, a lot of the challenges are recycled in back-to-back -back seasons or how all rewards take place at the Sanctuary with the corny tagline, where good things happen. It's almost like NBC made this show just to rub it in CBS's face for how much more they care about Survivor than the very network that's airing it. It almost makes me wish the actual Survivor series was on NBC instead of CBS. I also thought Joe Manganiello was a good host. Back in September, I made a video addressing the flaws of Survivor's new era and why I consider the new era to be a massive downgrade in quality compared to seasons past. And after watching Survivor 45, that season really didn't change my mind about what I think of the new era. If anything, it actually strengthened some of my arguments. Such as the seasons feeling repetitive and completely void of any unique identity, the formulaic casting, the oversaturation of idols and advantages, and the awful new twists which in turn promote safe gameplay. This is because Survivor 45 has the same exact format as the previous four seasons. The cast consisting almost exclusively of superfans who work white-collar jobs or are in college, and production trying to stuff an idol or an advantage wherever it can like the puzzle combination challenge in episode 2 and advantage amulets in episode 5. Or how the auction penalized the player who had the most money at the end of it by taking away their vote at their next tribal council, which resulted in the player with the most money throwing it all away at the next possible item. Yeah, the executives really didn't think that through. Sure, the first successful shot in the dark play took place in that season, but it took five seasons for it to actually happen. Not to mention that the starting tribes were so lopsided between the physically and strategically competent Reba tribe, the physically competent but strategically incompetent Bello tribe, and the physically and strategically incompetent Lulu tribe. My goodness, it's almost like the producers picked these tribes as a joke. If there's one good thing that Survivor 45 had going for it, it's that all episodes were at least 90 minutes long, and it actually made good use of the extended runtime, rather than just throwing it away on stupid things like sob stories or longer tribal councils. Those longer episodes, in my opinion, were enough to turn what originally would have been a 2 out of 10 season into a 5 out of 10 season. So congratulations Survivor 45 on that. Meanwhile, Survivor 46 doesn't look so promising since it appears to be more of the same. The same three tribes format, the same nerdy super fan type casting, the same everything. I mean that could change, but overall I was not impressed with what I saw.
To sum everything up, NBC really blew my expectations out of the water for Deal or No Deal Island. I guess this is just evidence to never judge a book by its cover. You could argue the same thing for my less than optimistic impression of Survivor 46, but I was also incorporating past results, i.e. all the previous New Era seasons prior to this, and from what it looks like, it just appears to be more of the same. While I did not ask for a show like Deal or No Deal Island to be made, I can now say it was something I never knew I wanted. I just hope the show delivers based on what I saw from the sneak peek. So, what do you think? Are you more excited for Deal or No Deal Island than Survivor 46? Do you hope Deal or No Deal Island becomes a success? Do you think NBC cares more about Deal or No Deal Island than CBS does with Survivor today? Feel free to leave your takes in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.